All right, uh, let's get Hebrews 13. And just open up with this here, and then I'll get this on the screen, then I'll open up. So, obviously, first and foremost, just want to give all praises, glory, and honor due unto Yahweh Bahashem Yahushai, Bahashem Rakaha Kodash, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well, and that do teach well, and that have taught me this truth to USA Shalom, Shalom to the hopeful elect, Kwame Asha'ala, and Ababa Ball. I want to take a look at this post here that I found on Twitter. And it says uh, Valid L's. That's the thread. And uh, I believe this thread, it just exposes people taking L's in their daily lives uh, for doing for doing stupidity, you know. Now, this post here in particular is is from a man that transitioned into being a woman. So he's an alphabet person. And now, now he's not profiting from actually uh, doing that. And I just want to take a look at this uh, comment that he made. Because this is a reflection of you Israelites when it comes to you fulfilling your end of the bargain. When it comes to uh, the covenant. Now, when you enter a relationship, especially if it's a serious relationship... If it's a marriage, especially if it's a marriage, that means you're going to be taking vows, right? You're telling that person, you're telling your spouse that, hey, oh yeah, you know, I'll be with you forever and ever and ever. And whether it's, whether it's good or bad, I'm going to be with you. And we're going to, you know, our relationship, our marriage is going to progress. It's going to get better. We're going to raise a family. We're going to do things together. And nobody can come between us. So you're you're making that very clear, right? And that that's that's a part of the vows. Like that's a covenant. So that's a binding contract. And you Israelites, you you, you broke the contract. And you pretty much changed who you were. And you're not supposed to do that. When when you progress through your relationship, you're not supposed to change. Especially when you made those vows. You're really supposed to stay the same. You're not supposed to change. This guy here, he changed himself from head to toe. He fundamentally changed himself because when when he started when he started in that relationship, he was a man. He wasn't a woman. So he changed himself. And that's basically you Israelites. You changed yourself before before the sight of the Lord. And you broke the rules. And that's why the Lord is leaving your ass. Or he left your ass. <laughs> Same thing, man. That's why he left your ass. And he has every right to leave you. Okay? Now, this is that's exactly what this guy is experiencing. Now, it says here, my wife is leaving me. At first, she was all on board with my transition. Then the changes started happening. She got distant and then just decided she couldn't handle it anymore and is leaving. Now I have to explain to my parents who don't support my transition that my wife is divorcing me. I'll probably get yelled at for making my wife leave me. Why can't I ever have anyone in my corner? It would be so nice just to have someone to support me. And this guy's selfish. He doesn't realize that he hurt people, especially uh, his parents and his wife, by making that decision to trans to transition. He's selfish, man. He doesn't see it that way. This guy's selfish. And just because you change doesn't mean everybody has to accept you, especially the ones that you made a binding contract with. And that's the case here with his wife. His wife doesn't have to accept this because that's not who he was in the very beginning. He fundamentally changed himself from head to toe. He changed his sex. And the reason why she's leaving is because that's not what she signed up for. And let's be honest, man. No real woman is going to accept this, man. No real woman that's right in her mind is going to accept this shit. She wants a man. A woman wants a man. Masculine. She doesn't want to be married to a woman. Man, all types of thoughts must have been going through her head. She's like, damn. I might have to flip this guy over. I, he probably wants me to flip him over so he can get popped. When really it should be the opposite, man. Because a woman is supposed to be flipped over and popped. She's supposed to get bent over. 
not a man. Right? So this guy, this guy's out of order. And ultimately, the, the scriptures is really against this guy's lifestyle. He's not supposed to be an alphabet person. Now, anyways, since I mentioned that, let's get some uh, scriptures. I'm going to start off with uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Because throughout the course of our relationship between uh, us and Yahweh Bashem Yoshai, the Lord has never changed. He has never changed who He was. He has never changed. He stayed the same. And you Israelites, you failed to realize that. You Israelites, you're at fault because you changed. You changed your God. You changed your glory. You changed the way you do things. Right? You, you, you were wicked. The Lord wasn't wicked. So guess what? The Lord, He has every right to leave you. He has every right to curse you. He has every right to punish you. You think you're going to get away? He has every right to do what He's doing. Every right. Because He followed the contract. He followed it. And you didn't. So Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, the same yesterday and today and forever. So that's right. The Lord does not change. That's plain and simple. He doesn't change. He doesn't change. But you Israelites, you changed. Right? You changed. And I believe you should go into Psalms 121 and also go into the Adawan Palau, which is the Lord's prayer. The Lord's uh, prayer. Salakir, prayer. And it shows you that the Lord, He loves you, man. And He'll do anything for you. Right? He only, He only, He, he loves you and He'll do anything for you unless, he, He's only doing those things for you because, because uh, you're doing the right thing. I just want to stress that. The Lord will do anything for you if you're doing the right thing. Following the law, session commandments and obeying Him. Alright, so... To get a better to get a better idea of that, I suggest you read Psalms 121. Read that prayer. The Lord is your protector, He is your shade, He will protect you forever. Right? So, anyways, let's move on to Malachi chapter uh, 3, verse 6. I want to get this. It says here, For I am Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Beautiful. So once again, the Lord does not change. Hey, and if He did change, we wouldn't be here anymore. The Lord didn't change which people He was dealing with. He didn't change His laws, statutes, and commandments. He didn't change the agreement that He made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Really starting with Abraham. Right? Because He was always dealing with Jacob, the Chosen. That's who he's married to. He's married to the nation of Israel. He didn't change. And you know what this also means? The reason why we are not going to be consumed, it also means uh, we get the second covenant. And that starts with Yahweh Shai, which that also goes into us getting an everlasting kingdom, which I'm going to get. That's Hebrews, the 8th chapter, starting at the 7th verse. And that's why we're not consumed, because we got Yahweh Shai, pretty much. All right, so uh, let me get uh, Amos chapter 3, because the Lord has always been dealing with us. He didn't change. This is Amos chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse 1. Hear this word that Yahweh has spoken against you, O children of Yasha'Allah, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. So he has only known you. You know what that means? He's only been dealing with you. That means he's married on to you. And that's why he gave you the laws, statutes, and commandments, which means he's joined on to you now. And you made a covenant with him. So that means it's a serious relationship. That means you said, Yasha Allah, I'm going to be with Yahweh Bashem Yoshai forever and ever and ever. I'm going to serve him no matter what. No matter what. When times are good and when times are bad. And yes, you are going to experience bad times when you serve the Lord. Remember the scripture says, When thou comest to serve the Lord, prepare thy, by, uh, thy soul for temptation. Briefly paraphrasing. Also, also uh, going, I'm, I'm referring back to what, what Job said. 
He said, uh, you know, the Lord, he's going to give us both good and evil. He was rebuking his woman. That's in Job, the second chapter. You know, the Lord is going to give us evil too. So when times are good and when times are hard, you're going to be with the Lord forever. You made that agreement and you didn't live up to that agreement. And that's why you're going through the things that you're going through. So like I said earlier, just because you feel like changing doesn't mean that the Lord has to accept you. All right. He doesn't have to accept you because you made that agreement in the very beginning. So that means you have to stay the same. And that's how you're supposed to function in a relationship. And that's what makes a relationship healthy. Right. And yes, I know it's easier said than done, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's not supposed to be easy. But what makes it palatable are the rules that come with it, you dumbass. That's why you have rules. That's why you have a contract. You always go back to the contract. You always go back to the rules. You fall on that. And that's what gets you through the relationship. Right? So I hope that makes sense. So it says here, verse 2, You only have I known of all the families of the earth, Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. What is iniquity? You being the condition without having the law. So if you're in the condition without having the law, that means you're sinning, you're going off. And that's why we're getting punished. Because that goes against the contract. We're not supposed to sin. And if we do, we're supposed to repent. Repent. And then that's when we get back into the good graces of Yahweh, Bashim Yoshai. And then that's when the relationship is good. You Israelites, a lot of you, you're not trying to repent. <laughs> right? And that's why you're getting jacked up. Hell, that's why we're all cursed as Israelites. We're paying for what we've done. And rightfully so. It has to be this way. The Lord does not accept bad behavior. The Lord is not a respecter of persons. He doesn't have to go along with what you want. Just because you feel a certain way, you feel like changing, does not mean he has to accept you. Right? And that's what I get from this. His wife had every right to leave his ass. Because he's a degenerate. And that's not what she signed up for. And a real woman does not want that. Let me get a precept. Respect of persons. Oh, I have it pulled up here. Romans chapter 2, verse 11. For there is no respect of persons with Hamashiach Yahawashai. You see that? He doesn't respect you, especially if you're not doing the right thing. Now, go back to the example that was written in Genesis, the fourth chapter. When, uh, when Abel, he gave up his sacrifice, guess what the Lord said? The Lord had respect unto his sacrifice. You know why? Because he was doing the right thing. He was following the laws co correctly. And guess what? He didn't respect Cain's offering because guess what? Cain wasn't respecting the Lord and doing what he was supposed to be doing. He didn't keep the law right. So the Lord didn't respect him. So there you go. Romans 2 and 11. For there is no respect of persons with the Most High. Beautiful. Beautiful. So now let's get Jeremiah chapter 3. Now actually, I don't want that one. Let me get uh, Jeremiah 2 and 21. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 21. Now it says here, Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, holy, a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto me? Beautiful. So now, in the very beginning, when he planted you and when he made that contract with you, you were doing the right thing in the beginning. Following the laws, you're doing good. And then now, throughout the progression of the relationship, you started to degenerate. You changed who you were. You left your God. And guess what? How guess how the Lord is looking at you? He's looking at you as strange. Right? So now when you look at the word strange, I suggest you go look it up in the Hebrew. Look it up yourself. Pull it up. Go look it up. When you look it up in the Hebrew, it says Nakaria. Now when you go into the root word of Nakaria, it says Nakar. And that means foreign. And that applies to the heathens. So in the sight of the Lord, you know, we look like heathens by the way we're acting. 
Yes, we're Israelites in the flesh, but by the way we're acting, we're like heathens because we're not following the laws. That's why we look strange unto the Lord. That's why we're degenerates. And it shows that you have changed throughout the progression of the relationship. And that's not supposed to be. You're not supposed to fundamentally change who you are. You're supposed to stay the same. That's why it's a binding contract. The reason why you get in a relationship with someone is because you like how they're acting at that moment, at that time. And you want that person. You want to stay with that person. <laughs> and you want him to stay the same, right? So now let me move on. Let's get Jeremiah 2 and 11. Let's move up. I'm jumping around. Now it says here, have a nation changed their powers, which are yet no powers, but my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. And guess what, man? These other nations, they don't change their gods. They worship the same gods that they were worshiping thousands of years ago. You go into Elam, they're all worshiping the same gods. And they have many gods, but they're, but they're consistent in how they worship those gods. Even though it's all madness. Moab, he worships Buddha. You Edomites, you worship Satan, the devil. You're very consistent when you do those things. But Israel, you have your power, which is Yahweh, Bashim, Yoshai, but you're not consistent when it comes to worshiping the Lord. And guess what? When you changed your power and you left your power, you left your glory, you didn't profit. That didn't profit you. You got worse. Right? So, so when you left that relationship, you were a complete mess. You were a complete mess. <laughs> Can you believe that? And that's this guy, man. He's a mess. Person that, that, that's not in a mess, he, they wouldn't be doing this. He's actually sad. He's lonely, he's depressed. And he feels like a loser, man. Right? He feels like a loser. That's you Israelites. That's how you feel. And you should feel like that. You love the Lord. He's the best. He's number one, baby. Number one. All right, let's go into Hebrews 8 and 7. A new covenant. And uh, it says here, verse 7, For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. So, okay. And um, it's not that the laws were at fault. It's really the people because the laws are perfect. Scripture says, Be ye as perfect as your Father is in heaven. And it was Yahweh Bashim Yashai. He gave us the laws, which means the laws are perfect. It's just that we as a nation, we as individuals, were not perfect. So really, we're at fault. And really, nothing really changes. And, and what, I, what I mean by that, when you see the second covenant come in, you see how the relationship and the contract, it evolves into something better. Because that's how, that's how marriage is supposed to be. First you get together, it's good, and then, it, and then it evolves into something better. You have a family and stuff like that. Even though there's struggles along the way, it's a good family and it's a good relationship. It's healthy. It's supposed to get better, right? Okay? Not saying that you're not going to have problems in a relationship. You're always going to have problems. <laughs> you're supposed to, right? But, but it's supposed to be healthy and it's supposed to get better. Right? It's supposed to evolve. So I hope that makes sense. Right, So it evolved. That covenant evolves. The relationship evolves and it becomes perfect. So that's what you're reading here. So it says here, verse 8, For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. That's talking about the entire nation. Southern Kingdom and the Northern Kingdom. Judah all the way down to Ishakar. Now, I just want to go back into the first covenant had been faultless, that point in verse 7, because what we were doing back in the ancient world, we were taking the sacrificial system for granted. 
So for example, you know, what we would do is we would think about committing a crime. We would think about sinning, right? Going off. And what we would do is we would prepare the altar beforehand. We'll get the we'll get the goat, put up the altar, <laughs> get the, get all the pro, get all the sacrificial tools that we're supposed to get, get the incense, right? We prepare that, then we go do our wickedness, and after we do our wickedness, we go back to the altar and say, "Oh Lord, forgive me, forgive me." <laughs> so we were abusing that system. Now we don't have a sacrificial system anymore. You know why? Because we have Yahweh Shai, and that's the main reason why the relationship got better. It evolved. It's because Yahweh Shai came into the picture, which he was always there. It's just now he was there in the flesh. We got that. And he and he, he was the ultimate sacrifice. So like I said earlier, it didn't change. It, didn't, it, it, it wasn't bad from the beginning. It just evolved into something better. You understand what I mean? It's just that we were at fault and we changed who we were. So let me move on. Verse 9, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt because they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, save the Lord. Yeah. So, you know, we, we went away from the covenant and guess what? The Lord, he didn't regard us anymore. So that means he left. He turned his face away from us. He got angry, which means he didn't accept us because we changed. Verse 10, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts and I will be to them a power and they shall be to me a people. And this didn't happen yet. This is going to happen in the kingdom. So us getting the laws put into our minds and and uh, written in our in our hearts just simply means we're no longer going to go off. The laws are going to be written in us. It's going to be like second nature when it comes to following the laws. We're no longer going to forget. We're no longer going to have to go back to the scriptures and look at what we did wrong. Oh, is, is, is today the Shabbat? Oh my God, I forgot. Oh my gosh, I'm not supposed to do this. I'm not supposed to do that. It's going to be easier. It's going to be like uh, breathing. That hasn't happened yet. And I will be to them a power, and they shall be to me a people. Healthy relationship right there. A perfect, a very healthy marriage. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. So, hey, it, it, that's not happening now. I'm teaching. I'm on my phone. I'm in my car right now. I'm teaching. But in the kingdom, I'm not going to be teaching in the kingdom. I'm definitely not going to be sitting in this in this car. <laughs> right? I'm not going to be teaching uh, you Israelites to know the name of Yahweh Bashem Yosha. I ain't going to be doing that. So it says here, verse 12, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. That's right. He's going to wipe away all tears, and we're going to get a clean slate in the kingdom. A clean slate. Verse 13, and that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. So there you go. So anyways, I hope this was edifying. Until next time, just want to give all praises, glory, and honor to one too. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweshai, Bahashem, Rakaha, Kwadash. And double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone that rule well. Peace and salutations unto the whole elect. Kwam Yasha'Allah and Baba Baal. Shalom.